Egypt, a land of many historical treasures, has always lived up to its reputation. Thousands and thousands of treasures have been dug out from under the red sands of Egypt, and it is believed that thousands more are yet to be discovered. Recent interesting discoveries along the plains of Luxor and the plains of Saqqara have raised many questions in the heart of archaeologists. If you think the pyramids are Egypt's greatest archaeological treasures, think again. Join us as we delve into the latest discoveries Egypt has to offer and the dark truth behind the mysterious boxes found next to the pyramids. When considering ancient times and civilizations, ancient Egyptian civilization was one of the most advanced ones. The ancient Egyptians were intelligent, sentimental, proactive, innovative, and even better, they understood the importance of conserving traditions and sentiments. They built temples, statues, and monuments to keep their traditions alive, and to this day, the vibrance of ancient Egypt is felt through the several monuments found across the country. By the second millennium BC, the strength and advancement of ancient Egypt was undeniable. People migrated into the country from the Middle East, Nubia, and Libya, all of whom had to learn and adapt to the culture of the ancient Egyptians. The Egyptians were expressive through art, painting, sculpting, and architecture, and they ended up constructing numerous architectural masterpieces. However, ancient Egyptian architects were not like regular architects. Their jobs required the application of knowledge from more fields than construction, and so they were masters of multiple trades. The architects were knowledgeable astronomers who knew how to read the stars and apply their readings to the construction of whatever structure they were required to construct. These ancient architects made buildings and monuments while aligning them with astronomically significant events, such as solstices and equinoxes. Examples of such monuments were mostly temples, tombs, and pyramids. Furthermore, these magnificent structures were built with simple materials such as sun-baked mud brick, limestone, sandstone, and granite. Using all these materials without the luxury of the technologically advanced implements we have in our time, ancient Egyptian architects built these structures into masterpieces that have been admired for many, many generations. The massive pyramids, for example, were built with the utmost precision, and it is impossible to omit their highly reflective structures. Over 130 pyramids have been discovered in Egypt, with the most popular ones being the Great Pyramids of Giza, but other important monuments worth mentioning are the Great Sphinx, the Colossi of Memnon, the Temple of Karnak, the Luxor Temple, etc. Beyond their impressive architecture, these monuments are popular for the many historical treasures that are buried under them. These include tombs of powerful pharaohs, gold and silver, and other jewels from several millennia ago. One of these historical treasures is a 3,500-year-old box found recently in Luxor, Egypt. Sometime in 2020, while the global case of COVID-19 was on the rise, archaeologists in Egypt unearthed a curious box after years of excavation in Luxor. This discovery was made specifically at Dair el-Bahari, in a complex of ancient royal tombs along the west bank of the Nile. Upon inspection, this box was found to contain trinkets and amulets from the old Egyptian age, all of which were dedicated to Pharaoh Tutmos II, an Egyptian king from 1493 BC. This chest was accidentally discovered by a team of Polish archaeologists while rummaging through a pile of rubble near the temples of some of Pharaoh Tutmos' immediate family members. The chest was found near the famous mortuary temple of Hatshepsut, the king's wife, and near the remains of the temple of Tutmos III, his son. Coincidence? Probably not. Archaeologists suspect that the discovery of this chest could be an indication of another treasure located close by. You see, when kings were buried in ancient Egypt, their royal tombs were typically looted by bandits or tomb robbers, or they were destroyed by some natural or man-made disaster. As a result, a new tomb would be constructed and the king would be reburied in a safer tomb and under more secure conditions. In 1881, the remains of Pharaoh Tutmos II were discovered in a burial complex in Dair el-Bahari, along with the remains of other kings. However, this tomb was obviously not the original. Upon discovery, the mummy of Tutmos II had been badly damaged by tomb robbers, most definitely as a result of the looting of the original tomb. His left arm was hacked off at the shoulder, the forearm was dismembered at the elbow joint, and his right arm was severed below the elbow. His torso was also disfigured, and most of his chest looked like it had been chopped off with an axe. The right leg had also been separated from the rest of his body, and the archaeologists confirmed that all these injuries were sustained post-mortem. It was obvious that Tutmos II's first tomb had been raided, 
and the search for the original tomb had gone on for many years. Now, with the discovery of this 3,500-year-old chest, archaeologists believe that the original tomb of Pharaoh Tutmos II could be nearby. According to the head of excavations, Professor Andrew Nowinski, from the Institute of Archaeology at the University of Warsaw, the discovered box was about 40 centimeters long, slightly less in height, and was well camouflaged. Apparently, the excavation team thought it was an average stone block, but after closer inspection, it turned out to be a box. Professor Nowinski confirmed that the box contained the bones of a sacrificial goose, a goose egg, trinkets, and various artifacts wrapped in linen. A smaller wooden box was found next to the big stone chest, and it also bore an inscription reading, Tutmos II. According to the professor, these boxes are most likely part of a royal deposit, which indicates that a temple was established in honor of the king. This temple would most definitely be located at Tutmos's original tomb. Professor Nowinski believes that finding these boxes is an indication that the discovery of the original tomb is underway. The possibility of discovering the tomb of Tutmos II is cause for happiness to archaeologists and Egypt's Ministry of Tourism. This is because Tutmos was not just any pharaoh. He was one of the greater ones of the 18th dynasty of Egypt and the son of Tutmos I, another extraordinary pharaoh. On top of that, he was married to his half-sister, Queen Hatshepsut, whose influence over ancient Egypt was undeniable. Before ascending to the throne, Tutmos II was a prince of Egypt, born to his father, the king, by a minor wife, Mutnofret. This made him one of the minor princes and questioned his eligibility to become pharaoh. In order to secure his kingship, Tutmos married his fully royal half-sister, Hatshepsut, and together, no one could contest their ascension. Tutmos was quite young when he became king, and it is believed that Hatshepsut was actually the one pulling the strings of the government and ruling the country in place of her young husband. Regardless of who was the actual ruler, Tutmos II's reign was known for the monuments constructed during his time and for the two military campaigns ordered by the pharaoh. At the time, Egypt and Nubia were at war, and a full-scale rebellion broke out between the Egyptian civilization and the Kush civilization of Nubia. Tutmos II was too young to lead the battle like the other pharaohs did in the past, so he sent an army into Nubia, and after the resulting war, the Kush civilization was crushed by the impressive military strength of the Egyptian king. After a successful 13-year reign, Tutmos II died and his son Tutmos III was crowned in his place. Now Hatshepsut was not pleased with this agreement, firstly because Tutmos III was not her biological child, he was son of one of her husband's minor wives, and secondly because she wanted the power of Egypt, which she had previously shared with her husband, all to herself. As such, she named herself Pharaoh of Egypt and erased her husband's name from monuments that they built together. One of the most popular monuments built by Hatshepsut was the Mortuary Temple of Hatshepsut, located in Deir el-Bahari, Luxor. This almost modern-looking monument boasts three layers of terraces, all of which are lined by colossal colonnades. The temple was once surrounded by lush gardens, and to this day, it is easily one of the most attractive monuments in the area. Because of Hatshepsut's ambitions, it is nearly impossible to identify the monuments constructed specifically by Tutmos since everything bears Hatshepsut's name. Now, however, 3,500 years later, the chest discovered in the area has taken the attention off the powerful queen's mortuary. Hopefully, the discovery of this box will be followed by the discovery of Tutmos's long-lost tomb and mortuary chapel, just as the archaeologists predict. Besides Tutmos II's chest discovered in Luxor, more strange boxes have been discovered all over Egypt. For example, several strange boxes were recently discovered in the underground Serapium of Saqqara. The Serapium is an underground necropolis built by Pharaoh Amenhotep III in the 1300s BC. Less than a century after Tutmos II's reign, this monument was built in honor of Apis, an Egyptian bull deity and god of fertility. Therefore, the Serapium is sprawling with objects that are obvious tributes to Apis, that is hieroglyphs, paintings, bull sculptures, tombs for several bulls, altars, etc. However, contained in the Serapium are several black boxes, more like huge sarcophagi, but no one has been able to decipher their relevance. In each chamber of the Serapium, there is a huge box made of basalt, black granite, or limestone, and in total, there are 24 boxes. Considering the sizes of these sarcophagi and the narrowness of the corridors within the Serapium, it makes no sense how these giant boxes were placed within the chambers. This oddity has raised so many questions like, who made them? Why were they made? How were they made? And how were they transported underground? 
The mainstream theory about the existence of these boxes suggests that they were used for the burial of Apis bulls. However, many elements do not add up with this belief. For example, the size of the boxes exceeds that of a bull. Furthermore, most of the boxes were found empty and showed no signs of holding any dead animal prior. Another great wonder is how these boxes were made and transported to their locations within the Serapium. Each of these boxes is located within the nooks of the tunnels within the Serapium. Bear in mind that these tunnels are narrow. Now, considering the dimensions of the boxes, the dimensions of the sides of the nooks and corridors, coupled with the fact that these tunnels are underground, it doesn't make sense how the boxes were installed. This makes you wonder, were the boxes made underground before the Serapium was sealed shut? But if that was the case, how were the materials needed for their construction moved? These are just some of the main important questions concerning the Serapium, and none of them have been answered. Each of these boxes weighs over 6,000 tons, so the possibility of them being carried is next to zero. Even if we try to consider how there were many slaves in ancient Egypt at the time, it is impossible to get enough manpower to lift these boxes and install them where they're located. Even if that was possible, it is possible to fix the number of slaves it would require underground. There are several theories out there, but none has been able to precisely explain how or why 24 giant sarcophagi were built and precisely installed in their positions within the Serapium. This is one of the unresolved mysteries of ancient Egypt, and we will probably never be able to find answers to all the questions raised by the existence of these great sarcophagi. Egypt has proven to be a never-ending source of archaeological findings and mind-boggling mysteries. Each discovery is like a piece of a gigantic puzzle, and although archaeologists have found millions of pieces, the full picture is yet to be achieved. Do you think it is possible to find all the missing pieces of the history of ancient Egyptians? Let us know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.